Hello, welcome to our problem session. Um, there are many problems in Kepler um, planetary motion that uh, unless you know Kepler's laws, it becomes rather difficult to solve. So first thing we should learn is uh, get a good grip of Kepler's laws of motion, planetary motion. Um, uh, well, uh, and I'll state the laws and then I'll show you how these laws follow from our previous lectures on uh, you know planetary motion coming from Newton's laws of motion applying Newton's laws of motion to to force of gravity okay so let's see uh, one of the laws is planets uh, go around Sun in ellipses Pla uh, planets orbits around the Sun are elliptical that one you already know this is basically saying what we already know so uh, so if you remember uh, f this is this is from Newton uh, we wrote down if this is x axis and this is y axis and this is the focus uh, then this distance is uh, this distance is this distance is r and this angle is theta so mu corresponding to the planet and this is the focus and where the center of mass is, which is very close to the sun, it's right inside the sun. Um, for so, this mass is close to mass of the planet, and ma this mass here, this object which might sit at the CM, is mass of the sun. And so, R was equal to R zero. 1 minus epsilon cosine theta so th this you can show that this this you can show is x minus c if this this center of this ellipse is c0 uh, x minus c is square and if major x same major axis is a some a square plus y this is center is at y square y equal to zero so c zero is the center b square equal to one you can show that a is equal to i believe r zero over one minus epsilon square and b is r zero over square root of one minus epsilon square um, and C uh, and and C is equal to R zero epsilon over one minus epsilon square. Okay, and in in these things, we also know it's related to angular momentum. Uh, you know, this R zero and epsilon are related to angular momentum and energy. And from the previous lecture, we already know what the relation is. So R0 uh, is actually equals to L square over mu alpha. L is the angular momentum. Mu is just um, M1, MM. Uh, m m over m plus m which is the denominator m is is the sun and this little m is the planet so this is almost like m m over capital m this can start so this this that's why mu is pretty close to mass of the planet and alpha in this formula is g m and m so uh there's a mass of the planet goes inside there which 
you can see you can't really get rid of it here and epsilon is uh, I think it's the square root of 1 plus uh, 2e l square over alpha square mu because this comes from the previous lecture so this is from the Newton so you already know this is already in the um, Newton's uh, Newton's theories okay um, all right um, so what's the second law second law is uh, it says that um, uh, when the planet is going around it uh, it sweeps out equal area in equal time so this is um, equal area in sweeps out equal area in equal time in equal time this must have taken quite an effort for um, uh, Kepler to come up with so so here is here is the Sun and if you uh, look at the planet so if so this is the area it sweep out say say in a uh, over uh, say 10 days is swept out that material and if you look at someplace else over here this will be 10 days and these uh, these two areas will be uh, this these two areas same and this this is the focus uh, that's where the Sun is and this is where the planet is and then 10 days later plants here plant is here and 10 days later plant is here so so th this area is equal to that area that's pretty cool actually um, well uh, this can also you can get from Newton's laws um, uh, from uh, looking at it okay so the way we uh, we can get from Newton's laws is uh, uh, we say uh, angular momentum is uh, conserved so this comes from the angular momentum conserved so what is L at any time L equals to mu because we are using mu uh, and mu r square so L, L at any time is this function of time and d theta dt. Well, uh, you can bring the L dt, bring mu down here, and maybe uh, I'll divide by two both sides. So look at look at this half r r d theta over d um, d theta r times r d theta so why do it write like that um, so if you look at uh, at so from here we're looking at this is this is r and this is d theta uh, so this is uh, d theta so this distance is uh, r d theta if d theta is in infinitesimal so it's kind of like arc distance so it, this is is close to a triangle with a base r and a height r d theta so this is the area in that and we can write this as da for the area element here and so if I integrate this side, integrate this side over any period, so say it's from zero to some time t uh, and zero to uh, full area. So let's see it went all the way around, all the way around. So you will have 
or, or any area just take a time let's look at t1 so so you can see that l over 2 mu in time t1 equals to just a1 so as the period is same these are fake these are constants so this depends on just area is proportional to the time taken and so that's what the sweeps are equal area and equal time comes from okay this is not how uh, th this is from Newton uh, not from Kepler Kepler didn't come up Kepler did this more uh, looking at the data um, that was collected by uh, Tycho Braha so this was all done by T so that's why it's empirical loss so the data was connected by Tycho Braha I think uh, from Denmark uh, okay so what's the third law uh, it took the uh, third law is uh, took very long time for Kepler to actually come up with so he compared there are two planets so we have one planet like this and uh, let's look at another planet so there are two different planets so some m1 and m2 and you have the same sun m so he looked at uh, if this is uh, 2a1 uh, and this is 2a2 so this is 2a1 same major axis same major axis he noticed that the period for this to go all the way around let's call it period was t1 and period for this planet to go all the way around is t2 he noticed that uh, this same major axis is to the cube um, is proportional to the squares of the period so you notice that t t square was proportional to the same major axis cube or uh, you might say that um, with proportional constant to be same for all planets that turns out to be not completely correct but uh, it's up approximately correct. So T1 square over T2 square equals to A1 cube over A2 cube. So this is uh, uh, our, our, if you write, want to write down, you'll have a T square equals to some constant. Uh, C I already used, let's call it uh, uh, constant k some k uh, a cube and k independent of planet but th this turns out to be uh, this turns out to be not correct k does depend on the planet so k depends on so you might say t square is actually k that depends on planet. So t1, so th this will actually be k1 over k2. Where k1 and k2 are almost equal, then they will cancel out. k1 is almost equal to k2. That's how you can just ignore them. In uh, Kepler couldn't catch it in the empirical one, but when you uh, use this equation, and you try to look at it then then you can actually deduce it um, so you have a, a is this uh, you have formula for a and you can uh, use this l and you can try to get the period and you put a in there so there's a big calculation that you can do and when you do that big calculation you find that uh, you find that's not the case so let me give you the answer uh, that you find. So this is the formula. You can see that uh, this will be almost, this M is the mass of sun, so this, and this is the mass of the planet. So this is almost equal to 
4 pi square over mass of the sun and g and g is the Newton's constant of gravitation so uh, this is uh, pretty pretty good you know uh, um, Kepler assumed it was more like this not assumed that's what he found in his data it was not good enough to tell the difference uh, even for uh, very massive planets like Jupiter. Jupiter is like the ratio of this will be 1000 and it's hard to tell in uh, unless you have a good data. So this, these are three uh, laws of uh, Kepler and this one turns out to be very uh, uh, very Im important law and uh, you can see that from the period you can get the same major axis. Uh, so as long as you know k and k can be k is a constant and it's pretty close to you just need a, the uh, mass of sun so m will be just mass of sun so, so in many problems you should try when you're given with a Kepler type of problem you can try if you can just somehow use this to solve the problem at hand so this should be like a first go to then if you if you're not able to kind of get much mileage out of this then you should try this this route but these two um, uh, these two usually are sufficient to solve almost all Kepler's law problems okay and so I'm going to do some uh, Kepler's law um, applications uh, for instance, I'm going to do a problem on Halley's Comet. Uh, I think I'm going to post it today itself. I've been gone for some time. So uh, now I'm going to make some more recording on Kepler's laws. Okay, see you in another video. Bye.